Hello and welcome back to episode number 9 of my Fortnite tutorial series. Today we will implement different versions of buildings based on the resource use and also try to display that somehow in our world and in our UI. So what we can see in Fortnite is that the resource used for construction has an influence on some values of your buildings. For example the health of the building is defined by that. Usually a construction of metal is more resistant to attacks than one of wood. And we will also take that one step further so that the amount of resources required and the time for building is based on your resource. In order to make that happen, let's go to blueprints and let's add a structure. So blueprints structure, let's call that S underscore building resource version. And let's open that up. And as I said, there are three things that will change based on the resource. First is the required amount. So for example, we could say that a wall of wood costs five wood, but one of metal costs 10. Make that an integer and let's set the default to 10 maybe. Then there will be the building time in seconds. So that will be a float and let's set the default to two seconds. And finally, we've got the maximum health, which will be an integer maybe 200 as the default. Save that and close your building resource versions. Then there are also a couple of variables that we didn't add to the resource data yet. So let's add them now. Currently we only store the name and icon of a resource, but we also want to show on our preview building when we change a resource. And the way we do this is that we will change the color of our ghost building material. So we need one variable in here, which is called ghost building color. And type for that will be linear color. And then we also need another variable, which will be the actual building material that we will apply to our building mesh when a building is placed so that we no longer see our ghost material. Type for that will be a material object reference. Save this and close your resource data. We also have to set up these newly created values for our resource classes. So let's go to classes. And before we go into our child classes, we will open up the master resource because we made changes to that and compile and save that once. Then we can go into our resources. So let's start with wood. For the ghost building color, we will use something like a dark green. I'll use a hex linear code here. You can find the code in the video description and the code will be 2C4F25FF. Then for the building material, we can look for M underscore wood, the one that we got from the starter content and move to a separate folder in episode one. Select that, file and save. Let's proceed with stone, ghost building color here. Again, I'll use the hex linear code. In this case, 4D2C17FF, something like dark brown, hit okay. And building material will be M underscore stone and save. Then finally go to our resource metal. Building material will be M underscore metal. And the ghost building color will be something like a light blue. Code here will be 1280FFFF. Compile and save that. Then we've got to add the resource building versions. So the structure we created, which we'll do in our master building class. Add a variable here and call that resource versions. Now the variable type will be a master resource class. Then select your container and make that a map or dictionary. And we will link the class to an S underscore building resource version. If we then compile and save, we could add elements and just select a class. So for example, wood. Then you could enter the amount that you would need for building of that resource, building time and maximum health. We know that we've got to have our three entries here for every building, so wood, stone and metal. So let's already add another element, select stone and the third one, select metal. Just that we have them created in our master class and we will fill out these values in the child classes. So let's compile and save and open up our child classes. So building underscore floor, expand your resource versions, resource wood, stone and metal. So for wood, we will say the amount is five, building time is one second, and it will have maximum health of 100. Then for stone, let's say we need eight, building time will be 1.5 seconds, and maybe 150 as the maximum health. Finally, for metal, 10 will be the amount, 2.5 seconds of building time, and a maximum health of 250. Feel free to use other values if you want, they're really not important at all. Compile and save. Let's go to the wall. So here for wood, 
we'll say it will be 10 with a building time of 0.8 seconds so that'll be a lot faster than our floor and health of 200 then for stone say we need 15 building time of two seconds and maximum health of 300 amount for metal will be 20 three seconds and 500 health okay, let's make it that our stairs are very quick to build and the wall just has a lot of maximum health so building time for wood will be 1.4 instead of 0.8 compile and save and finally open up our building stairs as i said resource for wood will have a building time of 0.8 so we'll add that here required amount of let's say 8 and 130 maximum health then for stone we'll need 12 1.2 seconds and 180 health and finally the metal version will be 15 with 1.5 seconds of building time and 250 health all right compile save and close your building stairs in Fortnite, when you start building and see your preview mesh, there is also a widget attached to it, which will display the maximum amount of health of that building in its current version. Then it will also display how many of your resources needed and the color of that changes to red when you're not able to build that currently. Apart from that, you see the left mouse icon and it reads something like place building and the right mouse button for changing the resource. So we also want to create that widget. Let's go to our widgets folder. User interface, widget blueprint. Call that w underscore build widget and open that up. Setting will be desired on screen instead of fill screen and no need for a canvas panel in here. We will start with a size box. Check width and height override. And let's say our widget will be 380 pixel in width by 140 in height. Then in our size box, we will add a canvas panel to set the position of all of our other elements. And let's start with the health bar. So you see the health bar and on top of that, the amount of health. So what we need is an overlay. Drag that onto our canvas panel. Then we'll anchor it to the upper center. Give it an alignment of 0.5 in X. Set the position in X to zero and in Y to let's say 15. Then we'll bump up the size to 360 in X and 32 in Y. Our first element in the overlay will be a progress bar. So drag that on top of that and make that fill. Then go to background image and look for bar fill. Draw that as an image, not as a box. Copy paste that for the fill image. And for the background image, we'll give it a tint of complete black with an alpha of 0.5. Also, we don't have to make that a variable. We don't need access to it and percent will be zero. Then on top of that, add a text. So drag that onto your overlay. This one will be called health text and it needs to be a variable. As a default text, let's type in something like 200 HP. Select your Burbank Bolt font with a size of 23 maybe. We'll align that to the left horizontally and vertically to the center. Then let's expand the padding. Give it a padding of 10 pixels to the left and 2 to the top. And just to make it stand out a little bit more, go to your shadow color and let's add an alpha of 0.5. Then hit OK. So that's it for the health bar. Now we will add the elements which will display our left and right mouse button and what those keys do. So let's start with a border. Drag that onto your canvas panel. You can collapse our overlay. Let's just call this build key border. No need to make it a variable but we'll copy it later. So it's good to have a name here. Remove your content padding and make your content align to the center in both dimensions. Anchor will be top center. It will have a size of 52 by 52 and then our position will be minus 170 in x and 60 in y go to your brush image and look for the building key background currently that's white we want that to be black so go to brush color make that black and lower the alpha to let's say 0.65 something like that then grab a size box and drag that onto your building key border Check width and height override, and that will be 24 by 29. So these values are just the size of our left and right mouse button icon. Then drag an image onto your size box. Uncheck the is variable, don't need that. And look for icon underscore LMB for left mouse button. We're already displaying the key here. Now we also want to see what that does. So let's just add a text. Make the text read something like build in caps. 
We'll make it size to content, anchor it to the upper center. Let's go to the font family and for typeface, we'll select bold italic with a size of 18 maybe, then make your shadow opaque. And then we can worry about our position. So in X that will be minus 108 and in Y it will be 60. We're already seeing the left mouse button and the key for build. Gotta do the same thing for the right mouse button. So copy your build keyboarder and paste that onto your canvas. Call that the change keyboarder and we need to update its position. That will be zero in X and 60 in Y. Expand your change keyboarder size box and select your image. Then we can select the icon underscore RMB for right mouse button. Grab your build text, copy and paste that. And this time we will make it read change in caps then hit shift and enter and in a new line we can enter resource finally we want to update that position which will be 64 in x and 60 in y also we want to see what resource we're currently using and how much of that would be needed for building let's grab a size box for that and drag that somewhere into our canvas we'll anchor that to the top center too give it a size of 30 in X, 30 in Y, and enter the same thing for width and height override, 30 by 30. Position of that will be minus 108 in X and 88 in Y. Then we can grab an image, drag that on top of our size box and make that the resource icon. As a default, let's just look for the wood icon, icon underscore wood. And to the right side of that, we will need another text drag that onto your canvas. Let's make it read something like 20. Check size to content, anchor it to the top center, call that resource the mount text. And since that may change on our current building version, let's make that a variable. We will select our Burbank bold font and size of 20 pixel maybe. Then we'll lower the alpha to 0.9. And under outline settings, we'll add an outline of one. Position will be 92 in Y and minus 70 in X is fine. Compile, save, and that's it for designing our build widget. Let's add some functionality in our graph. First off, there's one variable we need in here, which is a Boolean called can be built question mark. If you compile and save, you can set the default to true. Then we will need one function called update. And when we update this, we want to know about the current building resource version and the current resource. So you give that two inputs, call the first one version info and make that an S underscore building resource version. And the second one just resource and here the type will be master resource class reference. The first thing that we want to set is our health text. So grab your health text, set text. And if we have a quick look, we always want it to read the amount of health, then one white space and then HP. So to always get that result, what you use is called a format node, format text. So we already know that there will be a white space and then HP in caps. But before that, we want to insert the amount. And every time you want to add variables in a format text node, you have to add the curly brackets that you'll get holding control alt and then hitting seven and zero on your keyboard. And in the curly brackets, you can just give that a name, for example, amount, hit enter, and you'll see that it added another pin for the amount. Currently, that's a wildcard, so we can add any variable type to that, basically. To grab that, get your version info and break that. We can hide the building time. We don't need that in here. Off of your maximum health, we will convert that to a text, expand that, and uncheck use grouping. Then hook up the return value to your amount wildcard input. After setting your health text, we can set the resource amount text. So set text. And that's very simple. We can just copy our to text in node, hook that up. And instead of using our maximum health, we will just use the required amount. Then grab your resource icon, set brush from texture, check match size. And for the texture, grab your resource class, get class defaults, then break the resource data and we will hook up the icon to the texture. Then you can select your break node and hit hide unconnected pins. That's it for this function. So we can just return afterwards. And then there is another function that we need and that is called set can be built. 
we need one input of type boolean which will be the new value to set it to and before we do anything let's add a branch to check whether the new value is not equal to our can we build so the current value of it if it's false there's nothing we could potentially do so return if it's true we can set our can be build variable to the input and then we also want to update the display of our widget to indicate whether we can build it or not what we will do here is we will set both the color of our resource icon and the resource amount text to red when we're not able to build it and to white when we're able to do so so let's grab our resource icon set color and opacity and from the in color let's look for a select color node then hook up the can we build as the pick a as i said if we can build it that will be white and if not we will use red hex linear code for that will be in the description and that code will be ff393 ff hit ok after that grab your resource amount text and also set color and opacity then right click the in color and opacity and split that so that way you can get your in color and opacity basically that's the same input as here a linear color structure copy your select color node hook up the can be built connect the return value to the in color and then you will see that our resource amount text here actually has an alpha of 0.9 by default so our a also has to have that alpha after that return we can close our build widget and if we actually have a look at fortnite that build widget is somewhat attached to the building preview because if you move that around the widget moves with it to attach that to an actor we'll go to classes bp master building and in our viewport we will add a component that will be a simple widget component let's call that build widget and then there are a couple of values that we have to set here first off the space will be screen if you set that to world space you would always have to rotate it to face the camera which we don't want to do so select screen widget class will be w underscore build widget the draw size will just be the size of our widget so if you remember that we're 380 pixel by 140 let's scroll down a little bit and under rendering we will set visible to hidden by default we only want to show it once we've set it up correctly and then we will try to center it on our building mesh with the location here we know that our meshes have a size of 400 unreal units so to center it just set your location in x to 200 and in z to 200 as well now that build widget here is a widget component we don't have a reference to the actual widget yet that we want to update we've got to gather that on event begin play after we set the dynamic material drag in your build widget component and get user widget object then we have to cast that to our build widget class hook that up to set dynamic material and if that is successful we can promote it to a variable called build widget reference after that update it it will be asking you for the resource class fortunately we've got a variable for that in here and to grab the version info drag in your resource versions and we will try to find the current resource in there then hook that up to version info okay now we've updated that we also want to show it and here make sure to get your build widget component not the variable we created and set visibility to true so show it I already mentioned that we want to update the color of our ghost material based on which resource we are using let's add a function for that update ghost material and that's actually very simple we've got our dynamic material reference in here and you can just set vector parameter value so let's have a quick look at our materials folder m underscore ghost building because in here we've got our color parameter and so the way we access that is set vector parameter value the vector just means that we can enter a color here later and not just a float value and it will be asking you for the parameter name so in our case parameter name is color i would always recommend to copy paste that if you just do a little typing mistake that could break the whole system so we will paste color and to grab that color we will get our resource get class defaults break your resource data and hook up the ghost building color then hide unconnected pins 
can also close our material now. And after that, let's return, pile and save. Let's also add a second function called change resource. So basically that would be triggered when hitting the right mouse button. It will need one input of the type master resource class reference called new resource. And before we do anything in here, let's add a check. So a branch, we want to check that our new resource is a valid class and it has to be a different class than our current resource. So grab your resource and look for not equal. Then hook it up, connect to the end and the end to the condition. If it's false, return. But if it's true, we will set our resource to the input node, then update the ghost material so that that can change and get your build widget reference and call update there. Resource will be current resource and the version info will be our resource versions in which we'll try to find the resource variable. Hook that up. Then after it, we can return, pile and save that function, close it. After we set up our dynamic material here, let's just add a little bit of room. So we can also call update ghost material on begin play. And let's also add a variable in here called can be built question mark. So the type for that is a boolean and we will add a custom event called set can be built. Could also make the function, really doesn't matter. Give that an input of type boolean called new value. And it's very simple what we will do here. We will set can be built to the new value. Then you get your build widget reference and also set can be built of that to your value pile save that's everything for the master building class for now there is some functionality left to add to our building manager because our building manager will be responsible for checking whether we've got enough resource to build something and then tell our master building to set can be built to either true or false so close your master building and go to your ppc building manager in here let's add a function called can build or can place building it will have outputs First one will just be a boolean called out. Then we will also return the current resource. So let's call that resource and make it a master resource class reference. And finally an integer, which will be the amount that we need. Make that an integer. Also this function only returns something. So let's make it pure. What we first need to check is whether our current building is valid. If it's not valid, we can just return with the default values, so false, null, and zero. But if it's true, we want to copy paste our return node. And now we need to figure out that value. Let's start with the resource, that's pretty simple. Get your player character. Off of it, get the player resources. Get BPC player resources. And then look for the selected resource. Get selected resource hook that up to the resource, figure out the amount. We've got to check the building versions. So grab your current building, get the resource versions, then find and hook up the out from get selected resource. After that, break it, hide the building time and maximum health. Don't need that. And hook up the required amount to the integer output. Then for the Boolean, whether we can actually build it, we've got to go to our player resources and get resource, hook up get selected resource as the input. And of our amount, we will check whether that's greater or equal to the required amount that we already connected. Then hook that up for out, compile and save, close that function. And let's head over to our start building event, that one here. Before we set timer by event, let's add some room. Because of our current building, we want to set can be built, hook that up. And the new value will simply come from our can build building function and it's the out. Then we also want to update that every time that we select a different resource or that the amount of our currently selected resource is modified. So let's do the changing first. So add a custom event on resource change. Let's add a branch because we only want to do something if we are currently building and if our component here has already been initialized. Hook that up to the branch. If that is true, we also need to check whether the current building is valid. 
just to be sure. And if it is valid, we will call change resource. The new resource here it's asking for is just the currently selected one. We already implemented that in can build building. So let's just copy that and paste it here. So I'll play a character, player resources, and then get selected resource. And after that also set can be built. The new value will come from our can build building function and it's the out boolean. Okay, then there's the second event that I already mentioned. Add custom event on resource value modified. Let's actually give that one input of type master resource class because we only want to do something if that's also the selected resource that was modified. Call it resource. Now we've got to add a branch and look for a couple of conditions. So first off, we want to be currently building and we want to be initialized. Then the resource input here has to be a valid class. Hit that add pin here to add inputs to your end node. We will need four in total. Hook the is valid up to the third one, the end to the condition. And the last condition will be that the resource is equal to the selected resource that we can just copy over again, then hook that up to the end. So if all of that is true, we also want to check with that the current building is valid. And if it is off of it, set can be built, then can build building, hook up the out and connect that to is valid. Pulse, save, that's it for our building manager. However, these events aren't called yet. So that has to be done in our player resources. Let's go into our player resources. And we already got the on resource switched event here. So very simple, get your player character, get his building manager, and that will be the component. And then call on resource changed. So simple as that. And finally, in our update resource display, right here, after we update the current resource in our main widget, we can copy over our player character, building manager, paste that, and call on resource value modified, hook up the resource from the input of the event. All right, let's compile, save, and see whether that's working. Okay, so now I'm in play mode. Let's select our wall. Currently, we see that we would need 10 wood for that. It's red, so we are not able to build it. It reads 200 HP, which will the value that we set up for that. And you can see the ghost color that is a semi-transparent green. If I hit the right mouse button, it changes to stone. Also, the HP updated to 300, and now it would require 15. And finally, for metal, that would be 500 HP and an amount of 20. You also saw the ghost color updating from green to brown to blue. Now, for example, if I hit 3 to add some metal, now the color of the text and icon will be reset to white to indicate that we're able to build that. And I'm also able to select the other buildings, for example, the floor here, which has 250 HP, 100 for wood, 150 for stone. And finally our stairs, 12 for stone, 15 for metal and 8 for wood. All right, that's working perfectly. And that's it for this episode. In the next one, we will actually start to place our buildings in the world. And for every building, we will slowly increase the health based on the building time that we set up today. See you in the next episode.